Welcome to Evergreen Speedway's Home Track Heroes on CW11. And welcome to season number two for Home Track Heroes here on CW11 from Evergreen Speedway, second season. My name is Steve Mortland. To my left, my friend Tom Glitherow. Good to have you back, man. Hey, it's good to be back and uh, great to have fans yes. back in the stands. Yes, it was. All of you people that were here on uh, opening night for Saturday night, it was so good to see you and, and it just made it that that night so much better we've got a lot of action coming up for you on this edition of home track heroes we have our interstate battery hornets our becu nascar mini stocks welcome to becu to evergreen speedway to evergreen legends will be here along with our franks radio service outlaws and our speedway chevrolet pro late models make up opening night number one you know and walking through the pit area there was a real air of excitement going on and it was like everybody in racing was here. People that we haven't seen for years. It, it was like old homecoming week. And uh, I think some of the action on the track showed that <laughs> same enthusiasm too. Yeah. yeah, for that part of it, opening night was opening night. And you'll see a lot of it coming up in the next two hours. We really appreciate everyone coming out, uh, both in the pits and in the grandstands as well. Uh, the, the staff of Evergreen Speedway did a phenomenal job getting this thing put together. It was a lot of work in a lot of short time. And as we mentioned, we're going to start off tonight with our Interstate Battery Hornets. 30 laps coming up for uh, a really interesting group of people. Some new people coming in and some old people that have been running this co uh, class for a long time. And, you know, you're right. And they're getting ready to go. 30 laps on the 5.8 Smile Oval for these guys, along with some turns and twists for them. It's... Uh a great class and good action. It, it really is. Okay, starting on the front row is going to be the 13 of John Newbaum. Outside of John on the front row is the 46 of Mike Hathaway. The second row back, Damon Claiborne, brought to you by Reardon of Monroe. And starting on the outside, second row, the 221 of Lyndon Smith. Outside of, uh, inside of the third row, it's the 18J of uh, Jackson Beckel. Outside of him in the 66 car, It'll be Brandon Campbell in the ALT welding supply car. In the next row, it's the 77 of Christian Miller. Outside of him in the 78 will be Duncan, excuse me, Michael Duncan in the GDX garage door sales and service. In the 025 car tonight is Trent Gillespie, the number 49, driven by Calvin Miller. Dan Miller is in the double zero, brought to you by Exterior Wall Systems, Inc. The 16 second year driver, uh, Peyton Hopp, sponsored by Papa's Tavern. And we've got a green flag as they head off down and through the infield. Now they're going to make the left turn, head down the backstretch of the 3 8 mile oval and uh, out front. Uh, you're seeing some pretty good action. You are, and it's the double zero car out in front of Dan Miller, working down on the inside, taking a look up on the outside. You see the one of the new features for our second season, and that is the ticker that runs across, so we're getting a little bit better every year. We're going to really have this nailed down next year, but <laughs> this year, this is what we got, and it's going to be pretty cool. You're right now, John Newbaum, who's raced a little bit of everything here at Evergreen Speedway, out in the lead, followed by the 43 of Damon Claiborne, and the, the 48 car of Mike Hathaway. Also in this race, the 24 of McKenna Cox, brought to you by Cox Wheels Racing. The 62 of Brad Gruel. Dylan Frazier in the 47, brought to you by Gearhead Garage. The 03 of Lucas Hausenfluck. The 79 of Joe Weber, brought to you by Cooking with Mary Weber. Jimmy Fox in the 5, sponsored by Tom's Automotive. And our good friend Zach Bristol in the 07Z, as we've got one lap in. Now, one thing i got to warn you guys, when we talk about turns, this is kind of hard to figure out what's turn <laughs> one. Well, turn one's pretty easy. It's the rest of them that, that we have a bit of difficulty with. Because in a sense, we're putting them on three different tracks out here. But we do the best we can with what we got. This right here, this is turn one. That's a, that's a given. We know that. And then they head on down the back stretch to what we call turn three of the three-eighths mile oval. Around turn four of the three-eighths. And then cut down through the intersection of the figure eight racetrack. Currently in the lead, the 43 of Damon Claiborne's second spot is Jackson Beckel in the 18J, the 77 of uh, Christian Miller in the third spot as they head down the backstretch. And uh, we're going to be coming up here. Uh, oh, there we go. We got the 47 of Dylan Frazier stopped inside turn four. Bring it back upstairs and we'll uh, kind of get regrouped and get the Cascade push trucks out. They were a huge 50th anniversary for the Cascade push trucks this year we got to do a segment on those guys because the they are best so in the important, business and without a doubt. Without, without, it, the old expression is, without Cascade Push Truck, nothing stops. <laughs> Absolutely you, nothing. You know, so 
it's it's a nice it's you know it's just an opportunity early in the night drivers can kind of settle down a little bit adjust mm -hmm. those belts take a deep breath because they've probably been holding their breath for a while <laughs> this has been such a impressive training ground and and we'll see it tonight uh, in the upcoming divisions for these especially the younger people that get into this that's how they start to move up and uh, there's a certain part of the amount of drivers that are in this class as well that find it fun to get back into it where it doesn't bust their wallet to do it <laughs> and they go out and they're competing and, and it's just a lot of fun all right let's get back to it we are on board with peyton hawk and we had some a lot of fun with peyton last year and especially a wild ride that he took <laughs> that made your one of your most exciting moments exactly. of last yeah. season you know you can see the action as they head on down the back stretch you can see the cars moving all around onto the right side and i think that is some i mean incredible footage really of is. just what the driver is going through and you can see him kind of coming and going as he's trying to catch that car in front of him all right we're back to on track you can see the 24 of mckenna cox who really has done a nice job this season got a lot of good training and a lot of good experience last season and we're looking for a lot of good things to happen out of her we've got 26 laps to go out of 30 for our interstate battery hornets like we had mentioned damon claiborne still in the lead a lot of action as they look at that car take the 18j really take the wide turn around and got side by side with trent gillespie who's moved up into the third spot you know you talked about it and this class has kids as young as 14 15 years of old and some of them as old as uh, you know like pushing almost 65 and so it's a a really great mixture of people claiborne kind of in that middle he's like 29 years old so he's kind of in the middle of this whole thing but some more great in-car footage mckenna cox you can see just shifting going into a right-hander now down into a left-hander oh a little bump a little <laughs> scratch a little sniff i'm here yeah this is really outstanding footage and it's really fun to get a, an idea of the different styles of driving in the way that and you see that look at this up front of good job as Christian Miller has spun out, but the track stays green as Christian will get that thing back underway as soon as the traffic goes by, just like that. And we are still keeping the green out, and that's always a good thing as we've got 24 laps to go. You got Trent Gillespie in the 020 and the 025 car just moved into the third spot doing a great job. It was kind of cool that in car footage, you could see the headrest and stuff on McKenna's car. And up in the upper right hand corner, that was a fan because they do race rain or shine mm -hmm. and that fan is there to keep that windshield dry and clear so it doesn't fog up uh, on those nights where it's uh the, you know and it will damp. happen <laughs> it, re it really will you can get a good idea from these wide shots how absolutely jammed the pits were on on uh, opening night and uh, so good to see a whole bunch of friends we don't get to see that often that big long trailer i'll point it out to you when they come around next time by you see on the back stretch that's from our good friend garrett evans out of wenatchee who has entered this race 51st year in uh, racing stock cars we'll talk more about him when the pro late models coming up there you will see it just coming into view right there, there. that big monstrosity comes all the way over from uh from Wenatchee and so good to have him here. Damon Claiborne still leads it, not been staying pretty solid. Uh, the top three, as you see the running order with McKenna, or excuse me, uh, Peyton Hopp in the 11th spot, Campbell in the 66th and 12th. Uh, Zach Bristol having a good run as he kind of clawed his way up through the field starting at the back end of the day. Clay, Claiborne continues to lead. He made that big long trip from Snohomish <laughs> all the way down to Monroe, uh, but doing an absolutely great job. Very smooth, very consistent. He has some experience. There's a, a real mixture of drivers here uh, in terms of experience level. And he's one of those guys that's got a little bit of a, more experience and he's a, a front type guy most of the time. He's got quite a bit of a lead. Uh, just about, I mean, it looks to me like a by about a second uh, over the second place car, the 18J of ja Jackson Beckel. As Trent just mentioned that, there goes Trent Gillespie on the 025 car up into the second spot. But uh, it's kind of the old axiom that you hear uh, race announcers talk about a lot. That guy up in front spends a lot of time looking in the rearview mirror to see what's going on behind him. And when you see a situation like it was between Gillespie and uh, and Beckel there, uh, that just increases his lead even more because they're fighting not to get past as opposed to trying to go forward. Well, you know, you know, it was kind of interesting in looking through some of the profiles of these drivers. 
one of them said he was a beer truck driver. Can you imagine what a beer truck driver does after racing cars all the time? <laughs> and another one of them said that he was a psychologist. Ooh. And so, ooh, that's really needed in the pit area. Yeah, he needs nights. to hang a sign on his trailer and just, we'll just sit there and <laughs> Open watch. Open session? The, yeah, we'll sit there and watch the lineup of people going in there. That would, that, that's pretty awesome. We've got some pretty exciting news coming up uh, in this edition of Home Track Heroes about uh, a couple of brand new sponsors to Evergreen Speedway, one of which is T-Mobile. Uh, oh. We welcome them on board. And also, uh, and this is something you guys at home can get into too, with uh, Advanced Auto Parts coming on board. They have got a program going on that um, is will allow Evergreen Speedway, if, if they win this contest, to receive up to $50,000. And uh, they have, uh, it's one lucky racetrack in America, and it better be Evergreen Speedway, with your help, win $50,000 in the Advanced My Track Challenge for facility enhancements and upgrades. Fan can vote up to three times a day and will be entered to win fabulous NASCAR prizes. You can log on to evergreenspeedway.com to vote for our track, and we can all be winners. So they'll do some pretty cool stuff with that. And it's really good to see Advanced Auto Parts come back on board really and back this series because these guys are in our community and they have stores in our towns and stuff, and I think it's going to really help racing. Um, they've had some great sponsors in the past, some of them maybe not as applicable as Advanced Auto Parts. So <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm really, really excited to, to see that, you know, and you kind of look at this, you know, McKenna Cox back there running in about the uh, fourth spot. You know, there's a young girl. I mean, I think she's somewhere around, you know, the 20 year old mark. Think about the talent in that household oh, between yes. Dawson Cox, her brother, McKenna Cox, and even old dad, Steve, who won a championship in the figure eight division last year. Look at this, Damon Claiborne hanging on by a whisker and just lost that whisker as Trent Gillespie in the 025 gets around him as they tried to go three wide into turn number one as they fly down the backstretch. McKenna Cox uh, in that 24 car, you can just see her right there in that shot coming around turn four. The 78 machine of Duncan is getting a good run, but it's getting mixed up as McKenna Cox has uh, looks like has gotten into the lead as we have another car spun <laughs> down there just perfectly where you can't be see that's the five of uh, Jimmy Fox who had a pretty impressive run uh, throughout the race but still Damon Claiborne hanging on with uh, Trent Gillespie and the 18J of Jackson Beckel. Well Stephen you can also you know maybe tell our audience explain to them or I will um, that there may be a pass in the backstretch that doesn't show up online yet right. because there is a loop it's it's a electronically done deal and as they come past the start finish line then the whole thing updates mm -hmm. so if you pass going into three you, it still might show you running in the second spot until you come past the loop the wire and then of course it will change on screen so yeah. that's why you see right now trent gillespie in the lead damon clayward in second and mckenna cox in that 24 car rolling up into the third spot we are in the single digit laps to go nine laps to go out of the 30 lap main event for the interstate battery hornets here on opening night at evergreen speedway this opening night of home track heroes here on cw11 so glad that we'll be able to get back to you there's uh, the uh, number 43 who led a ton of this race damon claiborne trying to make his way around that car you can see mckenna cox how far ahead she is Trent gillespie still in the 025 leading it as when they come around, we'll have seven laps to go. And you know, what a great w weather for opening night. Oh, I mean, yeah. we've been here in the rain. We've been here in the freezing cold. I remember one night, opening night, a number of years ago, it snowed, yeah. you know, and this was a very, very comfortable night. And I tell you, the Speedway did a great job of social distancing, setting things up. Oh. I saw people cleaning rails, making sure the handrails were clean all the time. They had seating spread out all over the speedway. I was really, really impressed I was with too. how they did yeah. that so that, you know, you could keep your, maintain your six feet between people and groups, uh, and, you know, and the sort of thing. And, and like I said, uh, concessions down underneath the grandstand, it was all marked off. Very, very well done by the staff at Evergreen Speedway. Black flag that you just saw our flag man, John Peterson, throw uh, went to the 025 of Trent Gillespie. And when this comes around, uh, he will be, uh, should show that McKenna Cox will take over the lead due to the black flag of uh, Gillespie. You see Claiborne, who's really gotten a lot of TV time on this race tonight just by how good he's been running. So way to go, Damon. 
uh, and uh, Mechanic Cox. Once it all gets cycled around, should be shown in the lead here. We've and got and Gillespie to has three laps to report. Ah, so okay. he does stay in there. And and now we've got to get three laps, and McKenna is now shown as a leader. But by NASCAR rules, you're given three laps to uh, obey the black flag. If you do not, then there is a penalty ah, issued after the end of three laps, which means they stop scoring you, you're out of the race, and it doesn't make any difference. If you win, you're not going to get paid <laughs> for the You've already spot. lost. <laughs> All right, here we go. We're going to come up to three laps to go here for our main event, number one for 2021 for the Interstate Battery Hornets. And as we see Mechanic Hawks, a lot of, a lot of thoughts got to be going through that young lady's mind right now. She knows, well, maybe she doesn't know she has a lead. She very well could uh, find it out when she gets the white flag when she comes across here and in just a few seconds. Second running, Calvin Miller, just 15 years old. Oh, man. That guy, Go I mean, Calvin. You, know, so you know he doesn't have a tremendous amount of experience. He's from Arlington, uh, but at 15, can't have much experience. You just saw the white flag is out. Kenna Cox in the 24 of the lead, followed by Calvin Miller and Damon Claiborne, who was leading for most of this race. Cloud is clawed his way back into that number three spot. And McKenna Cox will take it into turn three on the three eighths. As you can just see her getting lined up in that bottom groove. She'll come out of turn number four and across the line here in just a matter of seconds. There it is right there. Congratulations, the winner. First main event for 2021 for McKenna Cox.